They called her the Nightingale. When she was three, her parents taught her Do Re Mi, and when she tried it out for herself, all the birds outside stopped to listen. She was five and a half when they took her out for her first competition. It was just a local children's festival with an open mic, and she remembered nervously clutching on to her mother's hand as she stared around her with wide eyes. They got her a stuffed unicorn and some popcorn while she waited for her turn. The other children croaked like frogs. She immediately got first prize. When she was seven, she got the attention of a big music school. The scout's jaw dropped the moment she started. They offered the parents $5,000 for her. They were poor. They agreed. They took her away. The parents watched with stone-cold faces. Training was rigorous. They screamed when she failed, ignored when she did well. She spent her nights shaking, praying to God to end her nightmare. The prayers were never answered. She debuted at a children's opera six months later, playing the part of Carmen. The audience couldn't stop sobbing. The moment she was done, they yanked her aside. They slapped her in the face whenever they noticed she missed a note. For good measure, she wasn't allowed to attend the after-dinner feast and made to stand outside shivering in the blistering cold while they laughed and drank the night away. Blood trickled down her face and then froze to ice. She was ten when they took her away for a country tour. By then she had caught the attention of the international press. The whole world was swooning over her. They stayed in expensive five-star hotels and ate the finest food and wine. She stayed at a lowly motel and had nothing but sausages and gruel. On some days, she had nothing at all. She performed beyond expectations. Tickets were sold out every night. Sometimes she was too tired to sing, but they easily rectified that by yanking her hair. And so she sang quietly, her tears and swollen skin easily concealed under tons of makeup. When she was 15, her voice finally cracked. Worn down from years of use, it sounded like a tired old man. She had lost that chubby face and gap-toothed smile that made people adore her so much. She was now a slender, curvy young woman, tall for her age. They found no more use for her, so they abandoned her and returned home in search of new talent. It is quiet now as she sits alone on the beach, listening to the whisper of the waves. She rubs her bruises, her black eye, her skin that puffs up way too much. She starts to sing, cursing them, and hoping every note was a dagger to their throats. And the waves carried her last song to them across the ocean, and at that exact moment they felt their throats cracking.